All right, guys, we're finally back into division. Um, very tough division. Uh, got Pittsburgh coming in. They're an excellent football team. What they've been able to do after the start is very impressive. Um, you know, losing their quarterback, never wavering, continuing to just uh, play the games. Uh, they've won four straight. In those four straight, they've had, um, you know, I think 14 turnovers. They've taken the ball away 14 times, only given it away once. Uh, that's a recipe for success when you can do that defensively. You know, they were leading the league in sacks up until last night, but they're still second in the league now in sacks, I think, or uh, maybe third. They fell to third last night, but they have 33 sacks on the year. Um, uh, good defensively, offensively. The quarterback does a great job of getting the ball into the guy's hands that can make plays. He doesn't take sacks. He doesn't make mistakes. Um, uh, Mike Tomlin does an excellent job coaching them, have them ready to play. He's one of the best coaches in the National Football League. Um, tremendous history, story, great defense, good offense. We've got our work cut out for us. Freddie, uh, Kareem Hunt had several impressive lead blocks in that game <clears throat> on Sunday. Did you know that he had that capability? And then what kind of impact can that have for, for Nick Chubb in your running game going forward? I think it's great. Um, uh, like I said, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are very unselfish. All they want to do is win football games, and I like guys like that. Um, off of that, this is, that was your first taste of having them both out there together. Does that dramatically open things up for you? I think so. Anytime you can get uh, guys that can do things with the ball in their hands and then they also can play off of other people, that definitely impacts uh, you know decisions, alignments, assignments. Uh, uh, the way you get the ball to those guys uh, changes. Uh, when you have more than, you know, a couple of options, it's always from that position in particular. Uh, it's, it's it's very, uh, you know, it's very good. It affects how defenses approach your offense. You know, I think uh, it depends on really what kind of defense they are, and uh, some of them play zone, some of them play man, so. You know, you always have, if you're playing a bunch of man, you have to decide who's going to cover him and, and zone, just things you do normally. It's just you really have to make a, you have to account for him. Are you adding to what they do in their, the package of those two together, or do you have to wait because it's a short week? Um, <laughs> we'll probably do the same plays we did last week. <laughs> Come on, Marla. <laughs> You know, James Conner is one of the best running backs in the National Football League. He's physical. Uh, he's tough. He's hard to bring down and tackle. Uh, he's good in space, and he catches the ball well out of the backfield. So I think he's a good all-around player. And, uh, you know, he's tough to defend. He's, uh, you know, he makes their offense kind of go uh, because they want to start everything with the run game, and they want to run the football. Uh, because they know that's how you ultimately win uh, in this in this division and in the NFL. You have to be able to run the ball when they know you're running the ball, and they do an excellent job of that. Freddie, did you play Kareem as much as you wanted to on Sunday? I know he, he kind of asked out a couple times maybe for his win, but. Yeah, I played him, I think, about. Um, you know, it was just the sequence and plays got him a couple times, you know. but. I told him he needs to build endurance. I've been telling him that for two weeks, so I guess I had to make a believer out of him. He, he wasn't he wasn't complaining though. <laughs> was, he, was he shaking up rust? I mean, could you see him getting better as this season goes along? Uh, yeah, and I think he's done that since he's been back. Uh, you know, with us, yeah, he got a couple of good weeks of practice in, and and uh, you could see his his movements, his fluidness kind of started to come back during the course of the weeks. So I didn't have any question that he was going to perform well. You know, the percentages of uh, Odell's catches to his targets weren't perfect or what you might want. The fact that you guys kind of made a concerted effort to, to go there and to, to get him involved, do you think that will have benefits as you move forward? Well, I think any time we get the ball in our playmaker's hands is, is a good good thing. He, uh, yeah. 
I think you have to make a decision on Drew Forbes by tomorrow. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Um, probably wait until tomorrow and make that decision. You know, um, there's a couple things that has to happen in order to make moves like that, and I don't really know if I want to put that out there right now. Can you just answer, um, ready is he to help you? Uh, Drew has done an excellent job. Here's what Drew's done. He's done a great job of, of carrying over things that he learned, and his learning continued to improve even though he wasn't on the field getting reps. So that gives him a chance, yes. When you lose your franchise quarterback like the Steelers did with Ben this week, that tends to derail a season. The exact opposite has happened with Pittsburgh. What have you seen from Mason Rudolph and how he's just been able to kind of keep that boat afloat for them? Well, I think he does an excellent job of protecting the football, first and foremost. Their defense has done a good job of getting turnovers. They've won four straight, and out of those, they've gotten their plus 13 in takeaway giveaway. Um, when you have a bunch of guys, they have a bunch of guys that believe in each other, and they they rely on each other. They uh, they just keep moving on. They keep their head down. They keep going to work, and and uh, they know how to go win. Does that say something about their culture, ready that they can have that kind of start and lose Ben and still, you know, make the trade and then continue to go on a winning trade? You know, I think, uh, yeah, it does. I mean. They've done it. They've done it before, not just this year. They've done it over time. And, uh, you know, what you want to do is be consistent over time in how you approach the season. And, and they've done an excellent job of that. Uh, Mike has done a tremendous job of just staying on task and staying the course. And, uh, you know, anytime things like that happen, you always have outside influences, outside noise, and they just kind of relied on each other. You know, he's got the five interceptions in seven games. Did he really transform that defense as much as just from the outside looking in, it appears that he did? I think uh, anytime you can add a playmaker in the back end, uh, the ball just kind of finds him. You know, he, he's always in the right spot. He's, he's great with his eyes. Uh, he, it's almost like he knows where the ball is going before it's going to be there. So. Uh, you know, he does a good job of being where he's supposed to be and then being where he's not supposed to be when there's a play to be made. Jarvis said after the game that, uh, that he would do the taunting all over again just exactly the way that he did it. He didn't really feel like he did anything wrong there. Um, do you, I mean, are you in support of, of that? You mentioned something the other day about controlling emotions. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't like penalties. I don't like penalties. So, I want him playing with passion, though. Not emotion, but passion. When you walked up that line, I mean. I just don't like penalties, you know. So, I don't know. I'm not going to, like, question whether or not it was a penalty or not. But they threw the flag. I don't like that. So, you know, we don't need to do things that get us penalties. Well, knowing that he's saying that he would do it again the exact same way, I mean, would you have to maybe have a conversation with him about that or, or you don't? I'm not going to talk about what I talk about with our players. I never do. Is there anything stand out about Joe Hayden and the way he's playing? He almost sounds like he's rejuvenated himself. Yeah, I mean, he's playing uh, playing very good. Uh, their whole secondary is playing very, very good. Uh, anytime you can have that many takeaways, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of good with their eyes. They do a, you can tell they do a lot of studying during the course of the week. Uh, you know, well coached defensively, linebackers, D line. Uh, they do a tremendous job of creating pressure on the quarterback in return. Makes the quarterback maybe make decisions a little quicker than he needs to be. Um, you know, they're second or third in the league in sacks, so they're getting home a lot. Um, and then the ball's got to come out, and then they're able to uh, do their studying during the course of the week and know where the ball's coming out at. So. Uh, overall, good defensive football team. You know, one of the best in the league. Sorry. Uh, what makes Watt so effective, and what kind of challenge is that for your two outside guys? His ability to bend and turn the corner, uh, his effort, his passion, uh, very, very high motor, doesn't quit, just keeps coming. And uh, he's a very special player. 
play on Sunday and then have to play Thursday night. Is there anything positive about that scenario? Um, you're trying to ask this question a couple of different ways or some people are. Um, you know, I think, you know, Thursday games are, you know, you've got one a year and uh, you try to make uh, make a schedule fitting accordingly to what gets your players in the best position to, to succeed on Thursday. And that's what we've tried to do. Mental. Does that answer your question? <laughs> that, was, that was a nice sidestep. Yeah. Is the challenge more mental or physical with turnaround? I think it's a little bit of both, but I would say physically more than anything. Uh, when you're, when the physical nature of it goes down, sometimes your mental aspect of it suffers. Um, you need to make sure we're trying to make sure we get these guys and we're going to get these guys back ready to play on Thursday, physically. Uh, you know the game of football is a tough game, especially at this level. And if these guys can be ready physically, you've got a chance. If they're not ready physically, I know you don't have a chance. So Yesterday, Olivier Vernon was a day-to-day thing since this is the only time we're going to talk to you before the game. Do you just at least have an update on him, where he's at, and if you're optimistic that he can give you something? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm optimistic. I'm just kind of just waiting to see. Uh, we don't really know. I mean, Hopefully he wakes up feeling great, you know. How about some of other guys? Uh, Seals Jones and um, uh, Murray, like. Ricky's, uh, Ricky's going to be kind of day-to-day too. Um, probably day of game type decision for Ricky. And Eric Murray versus who? Murray. Yeah, uh, Eric's probably not going to make it back. Um, yeah, he's probably not going to make it back. I don't know if that's released or not, but. I'm telling you, he's, he's probably not going to make it back. <laughs> Breaking news. You mentioned being back inside the division. Um, how important is it to build on that Buffalo win, and especially the stretch you have with Pittsburgh twice within three games? Well, you know, we try to stay focused on this week and this week only, and we want to go 1-0 and this week. That's the only thing we want to do. So uh, not really building on anything. We just want to go 1-0 and this week. Bring Baker in for tips on Mason since they played so many times in college. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> Maybe I should though. Short week. <laughs> Did you like that Baker tried to throw a couple of deep shots to Odell? And did you feel like they were close to making that work? I do. Uh, I do feel like they were. It was close. The first one was probably a little overthrown, and the second one he had a chance. And you know, 50-50 balls aren't always bad. So. Uh, as a quarterback, you have to have confidence that the other guy's not going to catch the 50-50 ball. It's either going to be you or it's incomplete. And I think they're continuing to build that confidence and uh, just moving in the right direction. You know?